This is fifth grade, lesson seven, and this is on writing and comparing numbers through hundred thousands, okay? And then also ordinal numbers, okay? So let's talk about writing and comparing numbers through hundred thousands. That's a big, right? Okay, so here's what I want you to see. We kind of did this last week, okay? But tell me, with these first three, if the decimal is here, what's this place called? Just quick um, review. Ten. Almost. Ones. Ones. Okay, the next one? Tens. Tens. Okay, next one? Hundreds. Okay. And do you remember we learned that that is a group called the units group? Have I taught you this yet? Or is this Isaac that I taught? Probably. Okay, so do you remember this from last year then? Okay, so this is the ones, tens, and hundreds, okay? And the cool thing about math is it's always a pattern. Okay, and this is always going to be grouped in threes, and so I either call it the one groups, one group, or sometimes I call it the units group, okay? Either way, um, that makes up one group, okay? Right after that, you get a comma and three more, okay? Do you know what this group is going to be called? Do you remember it? It's called the thousand group, and whatever that group is called, is what starts off our very first. Because remember, in math, you read from right to left, okay, when we're talking about setting up our place value. Remember that from last year? Okay, so this one's going to be called the thousand place. Do you remember that from last year? Thousand? Okay. Do you remember what this next one is called? Ten thousand. Very good. Okay, it follows the same pattern. Since this is the ones group, then we have tens and hundreds. Now this is the thousands group, then we're going to have 10,000, and then what do you think this one's going to be called? 100,000. 100,000, okay, very good. One, two, three, one, two, three, following the same pattern. So since this was the third one, hundred, we're going to have 100,000. Very good, Eli. Okay, so I just used a brief. Okay, so as I was saying, um, we're going to be looking at groups or patterns in math, okay? So I'm going to put these, this up here again, as you can see, okay? And I'm going to put a number in there this time. Okay. Now, remember, what's this group called, Eli? The ones. The ones group, okay? It kind of sets our pattern for everything, okay? What is this? Ones, tens, hundreds, right? Okay, and what is this group called? Uh, thousands. Thousands, very good. Okay, and as you can see, we have a comma in the middle, right? And every time you see a comma, it's going to separate a group, okay? So, this is the thousands group, and this is the ones group. So, if I was to read this number, I want you to read this first one. Now, we're going to read from left to right, okay? And so, if you were to read this number, what would you say? Just the number. 54. 54. Okay, and what group is it? Thousands. Very good. So we say it's the 54,000. Okay, that's how we would read that number. 54,000. Then I just want you to read this number. 321. 321. Okay, and we don't have to say ones group because it's over. Okay, so basically wherever the comma is is when you say your group name. Okay, so for example, when I read this number, I want to say 54,000. 321, okay? And as you remember, we don't say and, so I didn't say 54,321. I just wrote, three, I just said 321, okay? Now, let's try another one. Where is the comma gonna go in this number, Eli? Mm, after two. After the two, excellent, okay? So what he did, he thought in his mind, I'm going to go one, two, three, and there's going to be a comma, one, two, and then we would have another one right there. So if I read this number, read it out for me, Eli. Uh, 52,370. Very good. He read it exactly right. And as you hear yourself say it, that's how you're going to write it. So I'm going to write 52,000, just like I said it. 52,000. Remember that comma means? Um, it's a, a group name that we have to say. So 52,000, okay? And do y'all remember last week we said to 
put a dash in between numbers anywhere from 20 to 100. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we say 52 because it's a number from 20 to 100. 52,000. And wherever there's a comma up here, you put a comma down here. Okay. Then I'm going to finish out the number. 370. Okay. And that's how we would write the number with words. 52,000, comma, right here, 370. Feel like you understand it? Got mm -hmm. it? All right. This time, I'm going to give you words, and I want you to write the digit. Eli, come on up here and see if you can do this for me. Just right. Excellent job, Eli. 150,234. He did it exactly right. Now, let me show you a hint. Okay? Sometimes it may be hard to look at a number. 150,234. Okay? Sometimes it may be hard to look at a number and know how to write it with words. Okay? So I want to teach you something. When you see that 150,000, you know already that there's going to be a thousand group, right? Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to start with your patterns. And I know there's going to be a thousands group. Thousands group, ones group. Okay? And then I'm going to listen to the wording of it. And it says, use digits to write 150,000. So, what did it say? 150,000. So, I'm going to write 150 in the thousand group. See how I did that? And then you listen to the rest of it. It says 234. And we know if it doesn't say thousand, million, billion, and all those other things that you're going to learn eventually, then it's just in the ones group. So it said 234. So I just write that number in these spots. 234. See how that works? Okay. Very good. Now, I want to compare two numbers, Eli. So I'm going to write it up here. Now I'm going to compare that number to, okay, the easiest way to compare two numbers is to line them up vertically, up and down. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this number, and then I'm going to take this number, the other number that I'm comparing. Okay, when you line them up, ones group lined up, Tens group, hundred, thousand, ten thousand. You're able to see very easily which ones when you have the biggest number. Okay? In my ten thousands group, what number's there? Ones, tens, hundreds, thousand, ten thousand. Uh, In my ten thousand group, what number is there? Ten thousand? No, what number is there? Two. Two. And I have a 2 in both of my 10,000s, right? What is my next number? 3. Still the same, right? Uh-oh. Now look at my third number. In this number, I have a 4. 4 what? What spot is that? 1s, um, 10s, 100s. Uh-huh. And in this spot, 1s, 10s, 100s. How many 100s do I have? Six. Okay, so when you look at this, this one has how many hundreds? Four. And this one has? Six. Which one has more hundreds? Six. Yeah, this one has six. So guess what? If you have more, then guess what? It's greater than. It's bigger. So this number right here we know is the biggest because once we, we had two and two, which that's the same, we can't compare them. 
We had three and three. Those were the same. We couldn't compare them. But then when we got here, there were two different numbers, so we could compare them. And four and six, we know that six is bigger. So this number is greater than. So I would read this. 23,465 is less than 23,654. Do you feel like you understand it? You feel like you could do that? Feel like you could do that? Good. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, I want you to listen to this story. Okay, so just listen. Three of the largest underwater tunnels in North America are in New York City. Where your Uncle Jay lives? You just love The Brooklyn Battery, Battery Tunnel is this. Okay, and that stands, excuse me, that stands for feet, just to let you know. This one is the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. I'm going to put BB, okay? And it is 9,117 feet, okay? 117 feet, all right? Then there's the Lincoln Tunnel. I'm going to put LT. The Lincoln Tunnel is 8,216 feet long. And then there's the Holland Tunnel, H-T. The Holland Tunnel is 8,558 feet long. And then they want you to put these tunnels in order from the shortest amount of feet to the longest. So, Eli, looking at this, we're going to always start from the left to the right, okay? Is eight... Eight or nine are first shortest amount. Nine? Shortest. I mean, shortest. LT. Yes, yes it's going to be one of these two, right? Okay, because these have eight, okay? So it's, the war is between these two, okay? Who's going to win? Who has the shortest tunnel? Okay, so then we look at the next number. And this one has two hundreds, and this one has five hundreds. So which one has more? Five this, the five one. Okay, so which one is the shortest? Which one has the least amount? LT. The two. Okay, so LT is our shortest because it has eight two instead of eight five. You get that? So we're done with that one. Now, it's in between the Holland Tunnel and the Battery Tunnel, okay? So we have eight and nine. Which one's bigger? Nine. The nine is, okay? So which one's the shorter one? That this one. one. So, we know the next one would be the Holland Tunnel. And we're done with that one. And then the last one would be the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. Okay? So, we put them in order from the smallest amount to the greatest amount because we line them up step by step. Are you able to see that? Mm -hmm. Alright, now, we're talking about ordinal numbers. Do you know what ordinal numbers are? Ordinal numbers are? Okay, it would be like this. For example, this is one, two, three. But if I were to say it using ordinal, num ordinal numbers, I would say first, second, third. Okay, so ordinal numbers put in an order based on what place you're in. Okay, so for example, listen to this, and I want you to draw a picture on your paper. Okay, Tom was the fourth person in line of 10 people at the movie theater. Okay, so here's what I would do. I'm gonna draw like a ticket booth right here. Okay, ticket booth right there. And it said Tom was the fourth person in line. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. Okay, and which one is Tom? Tom is the fourth person in line. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to put T-O-M for Tom's right there. See that? Then it says this. Tom was the fourth person in line of ten people waiting for a movie. So how many people were waiting? Ten. So I'm going to go in and draw my other ones. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? And there's all my people. Now, here's the question. So listen to the question. How many people were in front of Tom? Uh, 
Three. Three people. Here's Tom. How many people were in front of Tom? Three would be the answer. Okay? Then it asks this. How many people were behind Tom? Count with Six. me. One, two, three, four, five, six. Very good. Okay? And so, that was an illustration to show you um, what our problem was. And that is lesson seven.